Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are joining us from around the world. Uh, thank you, those of you who have been part of this program. Uh, we have been doing it now for several months, and uh, we are excited that a lot of South Sudanese are paying attention, and they're engaging with the program. Uh, I'm always encouraged to see many of you uh, join us. I know it's a busy time. A lot of you are busy with a lot of work, and there are many things that people are doing. So when you do join us, uh, we don't take it for granted, and we are grateful that each and every one of you is very much concerned about the situation that is affecting our country. So you joining us uh, is something that we greatly appreciate, and we encourage you to be a part of the conversation. Uh, this is not a one-way uh, discussion. Uh, what we are doing here is to generate discussion so that people of South Sudan can engage about what is happening in the country and how they themselves can participate and become part of the change that we all want to see in our society. Uh, so we, I'm always grateful that you are able to join us. So thank you, welcome. Uh, make sure your voice is heard. Uh, you are welcome to uh, uh, write here, uh, make a comment uh, on the video. Uh, you are welcome to share the video. You are welcome also to make your own video. If you want to be a part of conversation, there are so many ways that you can be part of the discussion. Uh, it is not just only one way uh, alone. There are so many ways uh, that people have been engaging, and many of you have been doing that. You have been writing comments here. You have been engaging in debates. Uh, some of you have been making your own videos uh, to engage in a conversation with us. Uh, and even lately, there are people and officials that are making statements uh, that also want to be a part of the conversation. This is precisely what we want and that what we've been fighting for, to make sure that there is a discussion about what is going on in the country. Because unless if you are blind or you, you live in J1, uh, you, you, you would agree with me that the situation in South Sudan is horrific. Uh, people of South Sudan are suffering. Uh, the economy is bad. Insecurity is bad. A lot of terrible things are happening around the country. So only the blind people and those who have barricaded themselves in J1 are the ones that are, are oblivious to the reality that many South Sudanese are living in. And we as people of South Sudan, we are tired of this, we cannot have it anymore, and we are looking for a change. This year, 2024, as I've been saying, is the year of change. And each one of us need to be prepared about what we are going to do to make sure that this change actually happen. It has to happen. It must happen. Uh, so let me welcome those of you that have joined us. Please share the video. Uh, you can share it directly on your wall. Uh, you can also share it uh, on Messenger. Uh, you can uh, send your message uh, through WhatsApp to different WhatsApp group so that as many people uh, uh, as possible are able to join. Uh, so uh, let me just welcome you to do that. This is very important. Uh, so please uh, make sure uh, that uh, you are sharing the video, you are engaging. Uh, this is something that we truly appreciate. Uh, today, you know that our discussion for today is the continuation of the discussion that we started a few days ago, and that is entirely focusing uh, on Tim Edwards' book, uh, A Bloody Nile. Uh, those of you who have not had a chance uh, to, uh, to read the book, uh, I encourage those of you who have it to share it widely. You can share it directly through WhatsApp. We have a link uh, of the book. Uh, which can be posted here in the comment for those who have not had access to the book so that they can read it. What we are interested in here is to share information uh, so that South Sudanese people can judge uh, all the information that is available to them. They can judge for themselves and see what makes sense. If this is right, if this is the way that uh, things are supposed to be done or not. Uh, so uh, I encourage those of you who need the book, uh, make sure that you, you say it. And those of you who have the book, please share it, share it widely. You receive it for free, you must share it for free. We want every single South Sudanese person uh, to read this book. And as I said last time, we are working to translate the book into Dinka. We are also going to translate it into Nuer. Uh, we are translated into Shuluk, and we are translating into Arabic. Uh, so soon we will encourage those of you with the capabilities and linguistic ability to do this translation uh, to send us quotations of uh, how you can uh, do the work, and uh, we, are, we, are, we are happy uh, to provide you with a small token 
of appreciation. Obviously, we don't have a lot of resources, but whatever little that we have, this is a priority for us because we want all the people of South Sudan uh, to know uh, what has been happening. How did the country get to where it is today, where the country is on its knees, where people of South Sudan are killing each other, they're butchering each other, where the country is, has, is now known for, Im, for morality, uh, immorality, where all these terrible things are being done. And who's setting the example for these terrible things? Uh, we, have to, we have to be very serious. Uh, this is no longer a time when we are going to be talking to please some individuals or to please their egos. Uh, that time is gone. What we are here is to engage in the truth because the only thing that will set this country free is the truth. And we have to begin confronting those who have been spearheading these evil deeds that are affecting the unity of the people of South Sudan, the welfare of the people of South Sudan, and the cohesion of the people of South Sudan. So today we are going to focus on chapter 1 to chapter 6 of the book. Uh, the next one, we will pick it from there. We will spend some time and we'll go through all of this so that people of South Sudan truly understand what is inside the book. Now, before, uh, and by the way, today, I'm going to be speaking mostly in Dinka, Tongmonjang, because I keep saying the reason why I speak in Tongmonjang is not because I'm encouraging tribalism. It's because the people that still support Salva Kiir are Dinka. Uh, they have been blinded. They have been completely hoodwinked to think that uh, this government is their government, that this is their Dinka government. Well, it's not a Dinka government. Uh, it's a government of Salva Kiir and uh, a few of his cronies, psychopaths, murderers, thieves, and all kinds of mischievous characters that are now occupying J1. And because of that, we want to open up their eyes so that they know the truth. So today, I will talk first in Dinka, and then I will come back and end in English so that the people of South Sudan, especially the Dinka people, get to truly understand what the so-called leaders of theirs have been up to and what they have been doing, how they have been behaving, how they have been running the country. Now, before we get into our discussion, uh, some of you, uh, you must have heard uh, the statement that the office of the president had issued uh, earlier today. Uh, it's very funny, it's Saturday, the Office of the President usually doesn't work on weekdays, but for some reason today over the weekend, they happen to be working. And one of the things that they did was to uh, respond to the, our ongoing civic education, the series that we are doing on Tim Edwards' book. Uh, those of you who found the, the letter I posted on my Facebook, I'm not sure if you had a chance to actually read the statement that was issued by the President, Press Secretary uh, Lily. Uh, Lily Adieu, um, I will read it. For those of you who have not had a chance uh, to, uh, uh, to read it, I will read the statement. And then I will make a few remarks on the statement. And then we will go into the topic of our discussion, where I will switch entirely into Tongmanja. So the, the statement, uh, obviously they use the letterhead of the president. Uh, so it's, you have the seal or, and the logo of the president which is kind of interesting because it, ra it raises a, a, a concern. Uh, does the press secretary not have it, her own uh, letterhead, uh, that she would be using the letterhead of the president? Uh, but anyway, uh, it says press release is dated the uh, 10th of February 2024, which is a weekend. These guys, they don't work on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays, but here they are today working on uh, Saturday. This is very good. It's good news. Uh, the, tight, the, the subject is said a statement of unpublished manuscript and Peter Bear Ajax's repeated errors. The statement goes as follows. The office of the president has learned with shock and dismay that one Peter Bear Ajax has been using contents of an unpublished book, a bloody Nile, to launch a barrage of insults against His Excellency, President Salva Kiir on social media. The a bloody Nile surface around 2016, the author Tim Edwards pieces together baseless rumors with an intent to tarnish the image of the president. Almost a decade later, the manuscript remains unpublished, obviously because it is unworthy. It could not and cannot be published by any credible publishing house because the author did not present evidence to support his wild claims, including the late Dr. John Grang's spirit that wanted to kill uh, Kier. 
The team interviewed the talking spirit of its attempt to end Kir's life. Clearly inspired by the, by the 1981 movie, The Rise and Fall of Idi Amin, the author inarguably incorporated Amin's lifestyle scenes into his imaginary account of Kir's life in a vain attempt to manufacture a character of the president. In addition, Biar claims the office bought the copyright of the book in order to suppress its publication, and that's why it was not published. If so, why then is the manuscript still circulating? More importantly, the office of the president could not and would not engage in commercial arrangements with the author. If anything, it had two options on how to respond. Either make a public statement or le take legal action against the author. And surprisingly, Tim Edwards does not exist. No traces at all, including social media footprints and prior uh, uh, written work. Therefore, the fact that none of the above happened, the manuscript is nothing but mere propaganda designed by the enemies of the state to destroy the reputation of the president. Furthermore, in a public apology letter to His Excellency President Key dated May 2nd, 2023, Biar declared similar tirade of abuse against Key as error and asked for mercy. All I can do, this is a quote, all I can do is to acknowledge my error, beg for compassion from your excellency, and hope that your heart will not remain hardened against your son forever. He wrote, in light of the above, I urge the people of South Sudan to regard his latest rants against the president as repeated error. Lili Adio Martin Maniel, press secretary, office of the president. And you have there uh, the stamp of the office of the president, uh, the, 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 the stem of the, of the press secretary, and uh, of course the date of the letter. This is it. This is the, uh, the letter uh, from Adil. Uh, now, what is interesting about this, first of all, as I mentioned, uh, this is Saturday that this letter is written. The office of the president, this is the highest office in the land. Uh, it is supposed to be engaged on the welfare of South Sudanese people and what is happening in the country. But of all the things that are going on now, including insecurity, uh, tribal conflicts that are happening across the country, including in the president's own where up state, where people are killing each other, butchering each other, uh, economic crisis, uh, currency is dep depreciating uh, with, uh, you know, it's just on a free, fo free fall. Uh, and obviously, we have a lot of issues that have remained unresolved, the issues of borders, uh, Kirit, as uh, obviously, as you all know, allow the borders of South Sudan to be encroached into by Kenya and Uganda. Of all the things that are going on and ailing the country, the office of the president has chosen to address this topic and this topic alone, right? Now, if we go through it, first of all, they claim here the, this is about tarnishing the image of the president. Tarnishing the image of the president. Now, can anyone actually tarnish the image of the president other than the president himself through his own action? What is funny about it here is Lily has not actually mentioned what is it in the book that she disagree with. The major claims that are made in the book is that, one, the president is alcoholic. That is one of the claims that is made in the book. Is the president not alcoholic? Is Lily claiming that? Lily, I know you are watching wherever you are, whether you are in J1 or wherever you are watching, is the president not alcoholic? Even your own people, they tell us huh? the president is alcoholic. Everyone knows, the whole country knows that the president is alcoholic. So what are you denying? Are you denying that he's alcoholic? That is one. Number two is that the president is a kleptomaniac. Kleptomaniac is, a, is a someone who by nature, by nature, huh? is want to stealing. Someone who steal unstopped, whose stealing of public resources cannot be stopped. There are a lot of reports that have come out about the, the, the president uh, kleptocracy, how he's basically running a system whose main objective is to steal public resources. Sentry has released so many, many, many reports. There is even a map putting together Kier's entire family, his children, his wife, 
his brother-in-law, those of Gorgori, and his family, everyone around him with companies looting the money of the country dry. Is that not true? Is that also a false statement? That the, the fact that the president is a thief is a basically a serial thief, not just a thief, but a, a, a serial one. Is that not true? Are you denying that reality? This you, I don't see you mentioning in the statement that the president is not a thief or is not a kleptomania. Huh? Is it being disputed? There is no dispute about it. He himself, he admitted back in 2012 when, when he admitted that 4 billion, 4.5 billion, and that is the same number you find in the book. In fact, the book, the, in, in Tim Edward's book, the total number uh, of the value of the money that has been stolen is 4.9. So it's 400 million more than what Keir admitted. And that's because the book came out later on in 2016. So already in 2012, Keir had admitted that 4.5 billion had been stolen. And is there in the book. So is Lily denying that the president is a kleptomaniac? It's not. Okay. Another statement from the book is that the president is a sex maniac. Sex maniac. That, and, and it's there. We'll go through it when we go through the book now because some of it will already be coming out. And it's, it's, through, it's consistent throughout the book. We know stories of uh, women that President had had sexual affairs with, some of which are in the cabinet with her, and they are there in the book. We know even relatives, his own relatives, that have complained publicly. But we used to work in the same government. I used to be there in the office of the President in the national security. What is it that is being denied here? that he has not slept with the daughter of William Nguyen, as mentioned in the book. Is it true? Can the president come out publicly and say that he has never slept with her? How about the daughter of Arok Thon Arok? Eh? Who doesn't know about it? The relatives know about it. The entire community knows about it. All these young girls that go to J1, eh? they come out with a lot of money in their bags. What do they? Paul Malung, Paul Malung himself said it. Paul Malung are one. And he was the closest person to Salvaqir that there are all these girls that come to J1. What is their business? Is Lily denying these facts? Is she denying them? Okay. The other claim that is made from the book is that the president is a regular practitioner of witchcraft. Okay. Now, before I start talking about the book, the main issue that all the South Sudanese in the social media were talking about was the issue of a Jaiwir. And before the issue of Jaiwir, there was also the issue of a Kolokur last year where he sent uh, people to the village uh, to go and perform some witchcraft and with the song that has now become trending. Who doesn't know that the president is a regular pract practitioner of witchcraft? Is, is, is it something that you think you know, being don't know? Just simply people don't talk about it? What are you denying from the book? What is it being denied there? That is a fact. It's a fact. Is the reality. Now, obviously, when it comes to the issue of Kir HIV AIDS, which was the other claim that was made in the book, Dr. Mawin, we used to work for the president. He came out a few years ago. He was one of the people that was treating the president. He confirmed that the president has had HIV AIDS for so many years. He used to be the president doc doctor. Are you denying, Dr. Mawin, that he was not working in the president's? Uh, office. He was not one of the doctors of the president. Okay, what about Dr. Uh, Ding, Chol Dan Ding? What happened to him? Why was he shot after he has treated the president and diagnosed diagnose him? Was it not because of that? What about Dr. Yanga Bari Wanja, who was disappeared? Where is he? Huh? What happened to him? Are you denying that these are facts that we, we know? So beyond these things, what is it that you are denying? The massacre of Nuer in Juba, that Nuer were not killed in Juba. You are trying to tell us that Nuer were not killed. Did the president not himself go to the parliament and ask his Dutkubeng and Matyanganyor to stop killing of Nuer people based on their ethnicity? This is a reality. Yeah? What are you talking about? What about the stealing of the money? The Matongeng uh, story of him pretending there is a dead person that is being taken to Uganda in ambulance. The first time I heard this, I was in the national security. It was a Kolokur himself that was briefing us of the incident that had happened. So what is it in the book that you people are denying? That you come and write a rubbish statement saying that we are, we, are, we, are, we are tarnishing the image of the president. And 
talking about personality. There are people that have been saying that there is something about the personality. Is it okay, wherever the society you people in J1 come from, for a leader, leader of the whole people, uh, to be a serial thief, a serial killer, a drunkard, uh, a sex maniac, uh, and practicing witchcraft? Is this okay for the leader to do that? There is no society in South Sudan, no society whatsoever where such a things are accepted. The president is there not just simply to do good policies and implement them and govern the country in the most uh, re responsible manner. But he himself as the president is the custodian of the norms and the values of the society. And if he is engaging in such a behavior, who doesn't know about his appetite with the, with the girls? Even Bishop, uh, our Bishop Lokudu of the Catholic Church, did he not preach at St. Uh, uh, Teresa uh, Cathedral about key issues with young girls? Did he not pre pre preach? This is a, something that is well known. It's just simply, Junubin had been thinking that President Kir will change. He will accept that he's an old man and that he has a legacy to protect, but he doesn't care about that legacy. So you, I, I, I have no idea what it is that you are talking about here. All right? Now, if you talk about the rise and fall of Idi Amin, Idi Amin was better than Kir, Yajama. Idi Amin Dada was better than Kir. He built some things in Uganda. Yes, he created a lot of mess, no doubt about it. But compare his legacy with the legacy of Kir, Idi Amin was better. Idi Amin was not wetting his pants in public while the national anthem was being sang. That never happened in the story of Idi Amin. There is, there, is, there is so many ways that Idi Amin is better. He, he was protecting his nation. He was empowering his people. Kiri is giving away territories. Idi Amin was trying to expand the territories of Uganda. Kiri is giving uh, territories of South Sudan to, to Kenya and to Uganda so that he can just remain in power. He has allowed the entire economy of the country to be taken by foreigners. Idi Amin was ensuring that black Ugandans were actually empowered. That is why he kicked out the Indians. Uh, from Uganda. Now Salva Kiir has allowed the entire country, the entire economy, the wealth of the nation to be hijacked by foreigners. This is a reality. This is a reality. So how is it that you are talking a bit about Idi Amin? Idi Amin is way better than Salva Kiir. And if you don't know that, then is the time you review what the legacy of Idi Amin was and what the legacy of Salva Kiir is going to be. Right? So things that Kir has done here, Idi Amin, Kir, Idi Amin was not spreading some disease to young girls. Like what is he doing with all these things that he's doing? He's destroying the future of those innocent women. These are truths that need to be spoken. Huh? So don't, don't, don't tell us that. Now they are saying that they did not buy the copyright and they're asking a question. If the president had bought the copyright, why is the book in circulation? Well, the book is in circulation because I have sources. I have sources. And let me tell you, in this modern age, anything that, is ever, that has ever went on the internet, whether it's sent through the app, you post it on Facebook, you do whatever, and then even if it is deleted, it can always be retraced. And because I have sources, those sources who are also concerned about the welfare of South Sudan, I was able to access the book. Do you think people of South Sudan will believe what the office of the president say? Office of the president is known as the center of lies in Universal Sudan. It's the center of thievery. It's the center of witchcraft all over the country. Who doesn't know? President himself, among all the leaders in the world, he's known as a liar. He's a someone whose word holds no weight. He says something and he does opposite. He says one thing and it does opposite. This is what is known here in Washington, D.C., is what is known in New York, is what is known in London, is what is known in Addis Ababa, is what is known in Nairobi, and even Kampala, even Museveni, knows that President Kir is someone that you cannot rely on. You cannot rely on his word. His word means nothing because he doesn't keep on to his word. How many times did he promise he would never take the country back to war again? In fact, when he created the war in 2013, that was the statement that he said, I will not allow the country to go back to war again, while he's actually planning war. Huh? Oh, zero tolerance, zero, zero, zero corruption tolerance. 
Do you remember? That was his entire campaign. Zero uh, tolerance of corruption. And then what happened? He opened all the gates to corruption, starting with himself stealing the money, giving Bol Mill contracts without any bidding, ordering the ministers to pay money to, 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 to Bol Mill, and then Bol Mill bringing the money back to him at night. Who doesn't know about this thing? Yeah? Peace agreement that he signed. He signed how many peace agreements with Yakmachar? He assured people that they, all the peace has been signed. We are going to do the peace. We are going to implement the peace. And then what happened? Dishonor everything. He has been talking about election. We will go, we will organize election. Since 2011, since independence, no single election has been organized. Yeah? He has been promising this and that and this and that. Nothing. He's a serial liar. His office is a liar. So who are the people of South Sudan going to believe? Will you believe an office that is known for a lie? Or you will believe me? When have I ever lied to people of South Sudan? Every time when I say something, it is always found. President Kiir paid money, paid $100 million to get the copyrights of the book so that the truth that is in the book will never see the light. That is the reality. That is what has happened. But because God has said it, and go and read the Bible. It said in the Bible that the truth can never, ever be hidden. It will always find the light of day. Lies, you can spread them, but the truth will always come out. So because God Almighty is the custodian of South Sudan, is always watching the people of South Sudan, and he is finally fed up with how Kir has run this country, he had made it possible for the truth to find its way through me and to come out so that the people of South Sudan may know the truth. And now they know. So you are not going, who would you believe, people of South Sudan? Kir has not understood the fact that he is a serial liar and his office is full of people who are there to eat. Matokrap, I keep saying these are all matokrap. They are just there so that they can feed their stomach. They are doing politics of the belly. This is why you have Lily coming out to tell us all kinds of nonsense. When we know the truth, we the people of South Sudan know the truth. They paid money. And imagine they are talking about, they're contradicting themselves that the author contacted them to ask for money. And then again, they are saying the author doesn't exist. So which is which, Lily? Did the author contact you or the author doesn't exist? You have to tell us. And this is the thing. The lying has become such a, a serial thing for them that they cannot differentiate when they are even lying. Even in subconscious, they are lying, and then within their lie, they lie more to the extent that the truth is ultimately confirmed. This is the reality, my people. This is the reality of what we face as, uh, as people of South Sudan. This is the situation we are dealing. We are dealing with people that are liars. So even within their own lie, they get caught very, very, very easily. Now, funny thing about people that don't exist, how many people have disappeared in South Sudan? If you are telling us people that don't exist, where are Dong Samuel and Agri Idris? They never existed? You're trying to tell us these people didn't exist? They never existed to begin with? You people, you keep on disappearing people, and then you think they don't exist. They do exist. Dong Samuel was a real person. You're telling us we're imagining him, that he was never there? You're telling us that uh, uh, Dong Samuel was not a real person, Agri Idris was not a real person, Luala Khan was not a real person? They disappeared. Where are they? You found them. Huh? You found them, my people. And we know these people. They, have, they were there. Uh, Dr. Yanga Bariwanja, he disappeared because he discovered uh, the president is sick. And then the guy was disappeared. You think we don't know? We know. We know. So you cannot come and tell us all nonsense. And Lily cannot expect us to believe all kind of nonsense. Now she went on uh, to talk about my apology. Mm -hmm. Oh, she, first of all, she mentioned how people who are uh, sharing this are enemies of the state. There is something I need to make clear to this. And this is one of the things that President said about me when I was in jail, that somehow I am an enemy of the state because I was asking for his exit. I was calling for him, Ariak Macha, to leave the politics of South Sudan and allow the next generation to take over. Then he said, Biar is an enemy of the state. 
in his head. He think he is the state. It's like what uh, Louis XIV, the, 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 the so-called son king of France, used to say about himself, that I am the state. Yeah? This is the same way Kir thinks. He thinks he is South Sudan, and South Sudan is him. Well, he has to understand that he is not South Sudan, that he is an individual. Yeah? And South Sudan is a state. He will cease to exist. South Sudan will always exist. That one has to get into his head, one way or another. And by exposing the truth, we are actually patriotic. We are the real patriots. We are the custodians of South Sudanese nationalism. Not people who are destroying the nation. Not thieves who are stealing the resources. How many billions and billions of dollars have been brought by oil? Where is the money? Agaga Achul said last time that the money, the oil has been sold in advance. What happened with the money that the oil was sold in advance, Mr. President? What did you do with it if you were not the real enemy of the state? Huh? What happened to the resources? Where are they? Imagine Tiger was going the other day taking a Puk a Pukgir Sikh soldiers to go and massacre civilians of Marial Wau. Yeah? Marial Wau civilians massacre them, burn down entire villages. And then the Tiger battalion using their own pickup trucks with, with soldiers wearing their uniforms, going, delivering these people and bringing them back. And here is what they are talking about. Yeah? Mr. Le Miss Lily, Lily, why did you not talk about that? What the tiger is up to? Why, why did you not talk about it? Why did you not talk about it? Why are you allowing the people to be killed? You are facilitating the destruction of the people. Lual Marolit and Gorgori, who are both a puk, and Kir's own wife is a puk, they are taking guns to the civilian population. They are arming them to go and kill people of Marial Wow. Why are you not talking about that? That you... That, that I am the enemy of state because I'm exposing what is happening? You people in the office of the president, you are the real enemies of the state. And let me tell you, the days are coming when you'll be held accountable. And you will be held accountable. You listen very carefully. You are the real enemies of the state because of how you have managed this country. You have divided the people of South Sudan. You created a fake coup. So, and then you, you train a tribal militia to go and massacre innocent civilians. You kill children. You kill women. You kill elderly. You turn Junubin against each other so that they hate each other. And you use the hate as the fuel for which you run J1. Well, God and all the spirits in the world are finally fed up with you. And that is why this book found its way to me and through me, every South Sudanese have it, has it. And we are going to translate it into every language so that not just only the current generation will know of your evil deeds, but the future generation will know of your evil deeds forever. So that the story of this failure called Salvaqir will remain a source of warning to anybody that will ever set foot in the presidency. That is the goal. And that is what we are going to do. Now, finally, here, Ms. Lily is talking about how I apologize. And uh, she quoted uh, some of the statements from my apology. It's true, Junubin. I did apologize to the president in May. I wrote that letter. That is, uh, there is no secret about it. And I made it very clear to all of you, my apology. When I apologized, there was a lot of pressure that came on, on me. All my relatives, my family, from the m moment that I was on that TV in Kenya, I was called by relatives, and they told me that you, you must apologize. You must apologize that you cannot do this. I resisted, because you have to remember, President Kir ordered his national security to arrest me. They put me in J1, where all kinds of horrible situations were happening. I was absolutely very bitter. And I mentioned in my letter, when I made those statements on Kenyan TV, I was bitter. There was no doubt about it. I was bitter about what was happening. And then when I was asked to apologize, I refused. But my family and the relatives of Twitch community, I mentioned to you the other day the processes that took place, how those of the Tormajanga God were involved in the reconciliation, how those of Bura Janga those of Mama Rebecca, even my own brother was sent here to the United States to come and talk to me. All the generals from Twitch and even my maternal uncle from Boer County, they all prevailed on me. 
And I told them, this man called Salvaqir is a guy who doesn't know. Even when you give him an apology out of goodwill, he thinks it's weakness. And believe me, I will give this apology and you will see that they will never even admit that this apology has arrived. And I did. Did they ever, ever mention this apology? This is the first time the office of the president is even acknowledging that they did receive that apology. You know what happened after I gave the apology? They, they said, no, we, 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 why was it made public? A private apology has to be sent. This was from Gorgori, President Kir's own brother-in-law. He was the one telling me that. And, okay, I was determined to seek reconciliation at the time, and I wrote a private apology. I was told by my elders and my relatives from Twitches and from Bor that you do it. Since you have already decided to reconcile, you do it. And I did it. And they went, delegations, people, all the elders, the Twitches, community chairman, Bira Jangduo, those of Bilba Gwerepanyang, Ritor Majangagor, those of Madame Rebecca, they wanted to go and meet with the president. What did the president do? He refused. He said that he's not willing to meet with me. And even when he came here to the UN, Lily was with her. They came here to the UN to come and, 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 and attend the UN General Assembly. And what happened? I tried to go and meet with him. You know what he said? He said that if he is a feud, he call it a feud, utter. His feud with me, if he, doesn't, uh, if he doesn't finish it, then he will leave it to his children. What does that mean? He's a guy that has rejected the apology. Now, I told the elders, look, isn't this what I told you last time? Isn't this what I told you? That this guy is a guy who doesn't understand. Huh? He doesn't understand. And he thinks he's such a guy who's so powerful. He doesn't understand that power is not just about guns and money. There is all kinds of power. And it's about how you leverage it. All right? Now, they are due for all kinds of uh, accountability. So, it's, you know, talking about my apology, yes, it's fine. I did apologize, but you know what? That apology was never accepted. So, you know, we are back now to the trenches. And I said last time, when people are fighting, whether you, you, you kick somebody, you punch them in the face, you know, you beat them, yes, you use whatever tool that you are fighting. And you cannot complain, why am I being bitten? Yeah? Or why am I being hit in the head? And that, uh, and that, uh, and that, uh, and that uh, people are fighting. No, people are fighting. And believe me, this time, there is never going to be any apology. Put that into your head. We are going to expose. And by the way, I'm not, I'm not even started. I, I have, what I'm doing, I'm sharing Tim Edwards' work. My own work is coming. My own work that I have written is coming. So that is there. So this is the nonsense that Delhi has put out today. Instead of talking about all the terrible things that are facing South Sudan, they think that the image of Salvaqir is more important than the lives of the people of South Sudan is more important than what people are going through. This is a complete nonsense, and it's about the time that they have a reality check. All right.